Hello and welcome to Raven Art Paintings. Today uh, we're gonna paint the Penitent from the Witcher Old World board game. The model itself was primed with the black primer from Citadel. Uh, the Penitent himself have a quite a lot of red, so the black primer is very helpful to achieve the nice results. Uh, as you can see on the reference card, uh, again, it's very cool graphic, however, uh, does not give you uh, too much color indication so I have decided to get uh, some graphics from the Witcher Wild Hunt uh, board game as you can see now on the screen uh, it has a red skirt and uh, the bluish color lamp and the stone in the back that have a wee bit of, of the mud on it so it's gonna be kind of gray green uh, tone uh, we're gonna start from uh, painting uh, all the uh, all the uh, uh, stripes that he's uh, having here and there and we're gonna use the steel legion drop from the citadel the reason we're painting them first is because it's much easier uh, to do it that way you're gonna you don't have to be so neat uh, any uh, mistakes uh, you're gonna do at this stage you're gonna cover them up with the different colors later on next we're gonna switch to the scrag brown again from citadel and we're gonna paint all the leather uh, stripes that holds the stone on his back i have also painted the sword hilt with this color Next we're gonna switch to Mephiston Red and Waga Flesh and we're gonna paint his uh, skirt and the hood. Uh, we mix in uh, uh, those two colors to get a nice uh, rich burgundy uh, tone. With the red color the thing is that's very hard to brighten it up because if you add white to red you're gonna get pink if you add yellow to red it's uh, turning orange so if you want to have a nice red uh, skirt and nice red hood on this mini it is uh, worth to try with some darker and uh, red uh, tones so that's why we get in a very very dark for the start and then we're gonna be brightening them up later on so we mix in the green and red we get in a nice burgundy color and then once that's done we will be doing uh, layering and we're gonna highlight that uh, to, to, to our brightest uh, to our brightest tones Next we're gonna switch to the Storm Vermin Fear, the grey color uh, from Citadel and we're gonna use this uh, paint to, uh, to paint over the tombstone he's holding on his back. While you're painting that, uh, be careful, try not to go over uh, the stripes. Uh, you paint uh, earlier on but again if you do so it's an easy fix at this stage uh, we also use go gonna use this color to paint a couple stones on the base itself for the skin of our penitent we're gonna use the equal mix of the storm vermin fear and the cadian flesh tone and just remember it that you know uh, you paint in over the black uh, primer so it might be necessary to put uh, two coats or maybe even more Now the sword itself we're gonna paint with the mix of the lead belcher and the sauté green we want to have that kind of a greenish 
uh, color uh, metal and we're gonna call uh, we're gonna paint all over apart from the sword hilt there are a couple of bones on the base itself so we're gonna switch to the screaming skull and we're gonna paint them over with this color A few leaves that lie down on the base as well, we're gonna paint them yellow with the Everland Sunset. Next we're gonna switch to the pure white and we're gonna paint the lantern glass. We're also gonna use the pure white to paint the ice holes, uh, which you're gonna see uh, later on. Now for the lantern frame we're gonna use the mix of the Balthazar, uh, Balthazar gold and the black from Citadel and we're gonna paint all the surfaces and the frame of, the, of that lantern. At our next step we're gonna switch to the typhus corrosion and we're gonna paint the base itself. We want to have the kind of like a soil, dark soil, color tone and this, uh, this paint is perfect. First of all it's the perfect tone, uh, color tone. The second thing is that will give you a bit of that uh, soil texture as well. Uh, it looks uh, awesome with the, with the kind of uh, spring grass combination. Now as you can see I forgot to do it earlier on so I'm adding a bit of a white into the ice holes. Next we're gonna put some uh, wash on it. In this case it's gonna be the Agrax Earthshade. However we uh, not gonna put any washes uh, on uh, the skirt and the hood so we only gonna cover uh, the body parts the sword the stones in the back and the base itself however in this case I will avoid to put in any washes on the uh, on the hood and the skirt instead of that I would uh, do it only uh, a bit of a layering with with the brighter stone of red we want to have the full control of what we're gonna be doing it with it that's why the the washes are not gonna be any help in this case once the model dries off then we're gonna back to our original uh, mix of the Cadian flesh tone and the server in fear and we're gonna do some highlights so just remember we uh, do bit by bit and once the paint fully dries we move to the brighter stone in this case we're gonna be adding more and more of the Cadian flesh tone to our gray gray to to achieve uh, to achieve our brightest uh, tone Our next steps will be the stripes that hold the tombstone. So again, we're starting with the scrap brown and then we will be adding a little bit of the Balrog brown and our high, uh, 
lightest uh, highlight will be the pure uh, valorous brown and we're gonna apply only from the top of the surface when you can see that the lights coming on Now just to highlight the tombstone we're gonna use the mix of the storm vermin fuel with a bit of an ivory we're gonna do a bit of a dry brushing over the stone edges but as well a little bit on the on the surfaces next we're gonna do a bit of a moss effect on it and and we're gonna use the mix of the uh, technical frame uh, paint from citadel called the uh, Hexvra flame uh, mixed with the Ogryn camo. So we're gonna use a couple of different uh, uh, tones uh, that we uh, gonna achieve from those two colors just to have that kind of uh, deep effect. So we're gonna use a little bit of the uh, lighter green, a little bit of the darker green and literally uh, scatter this uh, color here and there so we're not gonna cover the whole surface it's uh, gonna be uh, mainly stepping here and there just to have that kind of uh, nice uh, uh, moss effect that uh, grown over the the tombstone over the years Now as you can see I'm adding a little bit of the brown to our green and that's mainly to achieve another another tone, uh, another green tone just to have that uh, surface uh, uh, a little bit uh, more deep and we're not gonna get that flat grey green uh, color. Next uh, our highlights on those we uh, rope uh, that he's uh, having as a belt so we're gonna highlight that with our original uh, stilligent drop highlighted with the zandri dust later on i will be adding a little bit more of the uh, ivory just to pick uh, the knot and the the edges of those uh, of those ropes And finally we're gonna do a bit of a work on the red tone so we're gonna start initially with our uh, previous mix however we're gonna add three more highlights uh, which is the uh, evil sun scarlet wild rider red and the throw slayer orange we're gonna be highlighting uh, them later on initially we're gonna start with our original uh, colors which was the Waga Flash and the uh, Mephiston Red however we're gonna uh, use for the, our first highlight uh, we're gonna use a little of the green and quite a lot of the red next we're gonna switch over to the pure uh, Mephiston Red and after that we will be adding a little bit of the Evil uh, Sun Scarlet once that's completed then we'll be adding a little bit or more of the wild rider red and then towards the end we will be adding the Tro troll slayer orange and we're gonna highlight the edges of uh, his skirt uh, with the pure troll slayer orange towards the end so now as you can see i have painted the uh, two coats of the mix of the red uh, with a tiny bit of the green and now we're doing the uh, the pretty much pure uh, Mephiston red make sure you thin uh, 
your uh, paint uh, properly and again we want that darker tone to remain in the recesses so uh, the whole point is uh, every consecutive layer you're gonna be put it on uh, it's gonna be smaller and smaller as much as you go uh, with the brighter tone now we add a, a bit of the evil sun scarlet and as you can see on my palette uh, the variation of those uh, colors is gonna be changing they're gonna be lighter and lighter anytime uh, we uh, we go further at this point i would like to mention that if you purchase this game and you like the witcher and you like to paint uh, those minis and you're a beginner uh, it's probably one of the easiest model uh, because there's not many details uh, on it and again you can practice some basic techniques uh, you can practice a bit of layering uh, on it so I think it's good good for a start uh, it's an uh, again it's an easy fix if you made a mistake so it's well worth it uh, to try painting if you're thinking about painting your minis and you're afraid to do so uh, I would suggest start with that one and uh, I'm sure you uh, you have a good fun uh, doing it so don't hesitate, get some paints, get the brush and go over. Now as you can see we're using our uh, Wild Rider Red uh, tone mixed with a little bit of our previous color and again we're gonna to uh, cover a little bit less every time uh, we, we add our brighter tone. Uh, next we're gonna add a bit of the uh, Trolls layer orange and we're gonna put at this point we're gonna put the, the, the top surfaces uh, remember that when you put when you're painting red is very hard uh, to brighter and the red you can add the white uh, or uh, or yellow to brighten up when you add an uh, when you add in the white one the colors turn pink when you add in the yellow uh, it's turn orange so you can't really uh, change you can't really brighten up uh, the red tone without heading into one of those di directions which is pink uh, and orange so bear, bear that in mind that once you're doing it uh, in a red uh, color painting it's probably the best practice to start from the darker red and then brighten it up so you avoid uh, getting uh, getting pink or orange obviously as you can see i'm adding a tiny bit of those but again on the highlights it looks uh, good but when you cover the whole thing in pink or yellow it's not it's not uh, what we want so as you can see now I'm painting the, the edges with pretty much pure uh, orange uh, which in this case uh, is fine because we want that uh, bit of a contrast on the edges but that's pretty much it I wouldn't go too much orange uh, as, as I believe you know we want to have that red-ish uh, tone to be uh, dominating on his skirt in the in the deep uh, recesses in the inside of his uh, of his skirt again we're gonna put a little bit of the the burgundy highlight tiny bit on the top surface of the red but again we we don't have to go through that black primer we want that to remain uh, to remain uh, dark now the sword itself, I want to have that sword a little bit uh, rusty, so we're gonna paint it over with the riser rust from Citadel, it's a technical paint, so a bit of a dry brushing, we're moving the brush on one direction, so we want to achieve that kind of uh, uh, rusty effect uh, on it. Once we've done that, we do a bit of a highlighting on the edges with the lead belcher, but again, just those uh, tiny wee uh, bits uh, on, the, uh, on the handle and then again 
we're gonna put a tiny drops of that uh, silver on the sword itself so it's gonna be uh, the effect that the rust uh, was removed from those surfaces uh, let's say when when the sword was used on the fight so generally the sword will be rusty but it will be scattered here and there the shiny parts uh, that we're gonna cover with a pure lead belcher now we might highlight uh, those couple of stones on the base with the same mixed uh, with tiny more of ivory just to break them up and once we've done that we're gonna get to our lantern so we go back to our Balthazar gold and we're gonna highlight uh, all the top surfaces uh, with this color but uh, once that's done uh, we're gonna switch over to the Retriever armor sorry for my pronunciation I might say that wrong but we want to have uh, the edges, couple edges of that lantern uh, uh, stand off a bit and we want to have that uh, highlighted a bit more so we're gonna use with kind of a pure pure gold effect here and there especially on those on those frames and the top surface now we're gonna paint the glass of the lantern so we're gonna use the mixture of the ivory and the sotek green and again we're gonna use a couple different tones and the whole idea is that we don't want those glasses to be painted evenly we want them to be brighter on the top and a bit darker on the bottom but again every side of that lantern could look different uh, that will bring the, the the best effect so ideally if we're gonna put uh, the the most dark blue on the bottom of the lamp and and then once you go to the top you can draw a couple of white lines you can you can play a bit with it uh, uh, we want to have that effect that that light it's coming off that lamp so we want to have a bit of a white spot here and there as you can see now I'm putting a little, getting back a bit more white uh, here and there and and the different shades of that uh, uh, blue uh, tone as well so we want to have the impression that the light is coming out uh, of it Now you can see, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna put a bit of pure ivory here and there on the roping, especially on the on the knots. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna highlight the the edges of those roping with the pure ivory. Next, we want to have a bit of a light reflection on the model itself. So we're gonna mix again our two colors. Uh, the sotek green with the ivory and we're gonna do a bit of a dry brushing uh, here and there so I don't want to go over too much I don't want that to dominate the model so mainly the arm the chest uh, a little bit on the edge of the tombstone in the back and a little bit on the sword uh, itself however uh, I want that light to be very delicate and cover a little bit of that mini not the whole lot i don't want as i said i don't want that light to be dominating the uh, the model and later on i will gonna put some grass on the base itself so we're gonna put a tiny bit of this color on the grass uh, underneath the lamp as well Now we're gonna put a bit of a wash on the uh, on his eyes. Uh, we're gonna use the dark and half nightshade. Uh, we I initially sink those eyes holes with this uh, uh, with this color, and then remove the excessive amount of the wash. So we're gonna have a tiny bit of the depth with the white in the back. Uh, next, we're gonna switch over to the water brown, and we're gonna do a bit of dry brushing on the base. 
uh, once we do that, uh, done that we you might highlight the leaves and uh, and the bones the bones again ivory or the screaming skull whichever you have but the leaves for the leaves itself i use uh, uh, our orange and red mix just to give them that autumn look Next we're gonna seed some grass, so I use the 2.5 millimeter uh, spring autumn uh, grass. Uh, PVA glue uh, scatter in the areas that you want it and then uh, do load it heavily on the model and then we're gonna remove uh, excess uh, amount of that grass and then repeat for the next area and the next and the next. Uh, any excessive uh, amount of grass we easily can shake it off the model and then with the soft old brush you can uh, you can remove uh, the loose uh, pieces of grass and again uh, with the soft brush and the brush handle uh, here and there uh, we put the sh uh, we give it a bit of a shape uh, to, to that grass as I mentioned earlier on we want a bit of a, a light reflection on the grass underneath the lab so uh, again with uh, half dry brush we're gonna put a little bit of that light blue uh, mix we used earlier on for the lantern uh, we're gonna put a tiny bit uh, on the bottom on that grass uh, bluish tone so this is how the model look like so far uh, for our uh, probably our final stage uh, we're gonna we're gonna paint uh, the rim again uh, all my monsters from this board game have the uh, dark gray uh, rim uh, which is painted with the German gray from Vallejo and again just just a final touch the, the, the highlight on the edge of his skirt with the Troll Slayer orange. So this is it the painted and painted uh, I hope you uh, like this video uh, as I seen on my channel that most of my viewers uh, haven't subscribed my channel. So if you want that channel to grow over, you want to see more of these videos, please give the thumb up. Please uh, subscribe this channel, and I hope to see you again uh, on my next uh, clips. Next time I will try to uh, to paint uh, another uh, Witcher. Uh, I don't know which school is gonna be yet, uh, but uh, we have a bit of a voting in uh, house. We will see. But uh, as I said earlier on, if you like this video, give the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you again. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching, and I should see you on my next clip. Take care. Bye bye.